Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Virtual Foundry Podcast, Volume 2, Episode 11. Today is Friday, July 23rd, 2021. The time is 11.15 a.m. And the temperature outside is a nice summer warm 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 30 degrees for you Celsius users. So smack dab in the middle of the summer, uh, these temps are right on for us. Today, we're gonna to be talking about our latest material release. That's a Pyrex or borosilicate filament. I'm Trisha Cease, the president of the Virtual Foundry. And with me as always is Brad Woods, our founder, inventor, and all around science guy. Say hello, Brad. Hi, everybody. So uh, Brad, you've been working diligently on developing this Pyrex, a borosilicate filament. Uh, pyre the words Pyrex and borosilicate are interchangeable. Tell us about this new material. Right, I'm, I've actually, I mean, I did the first versions of this as far back as two years ago. Um, so <clears throat> I've been experimenting with this for a long time, uh, sourcing materials that we knew we could get consistently well into the future was part of the challenge. But I've but we found that and and this stuff looks really good. It, it's made out of uh, very spherical particles of glass that are between twenty and forty microns roughly, and yeah, it's just kind of an interesting new material. Partly what I'm excited about is that some of the challenges of sintering metal involve oxygen and having to keep oxygen away from the process. Um, when you're working with glass oxides are just part of the, its chemistry already. So it becomes a, a non-issue whatsoever. So our users that are um, accustomed to using the carbon on top of their crucibles when they're firing things, they won't need to do that. The rest of the process is the same. It debinds at the same temperatures. Uh, it will center at 15, 1550 uh, Fahrenheit. I can't remember what that is in Celsius, even though I meant to make a note. 843 degrees Celsius. 843, right. So, which is a relatively low temperature. It's not hard to get to in a kiln. So, yeah. So it's a 3D printing material that anyone, everyone has access to, but it's very rigid. It's very strong, very tolerant of heat and very tolerant of um, hostile chemicals, things like that. It's very inert. That sounds awesome. And we're talking about 3D printing glass. So could I print my own glasses? No, 3D printed glass that we're talking about and 3D printed optically clear glass are two very different things. In the sintering process, the way that it works right now, it's, it's particles. So there are air inclusions throughout the piece. So, uh, so visible light won't pass through it. Though, interestingly, much of the other spectrum that's outside of the visible wavelengths will actually pass through it as if it were transparent. So you have some pictures of what this material looks like in its printed and centered state. Let's take a look at those. Okay, so the one on the left, the one on the left is how it comes off the print bed. So this was printed with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on an Ender 5. The one on the left is right off the print bed. The one on the right has been sintered. The piece on the left still has plastic in it. This is straight off the print bed. The piece on the right has been run through our debind and sintering cycle. So the temperature was slowly ramped in a kiln, in a crucible, and buried in our refractory, just like you always do, uh, and run up to a temperature of 1550. Uh, after that, there really was no cleanup on this or anything. This is what it looks like straight out of the crucible. Just brush off some of the, the ball a little bit of the ballast will stick to it, but this is just brushed off. And here's another photo of the same piece, the one that's on the right, just a little bit closer. And the particles in this is, are quite large. So they are, they're, they're visible uh, when you look at it. And some of the practical applications for something like this are, uh, glass filters used in labs. This is an important one. Another interesting topic is Pyrex and borosilicate. Part of what makes it interesting is its tolerance to rapid changes in heat. So you can put a torch on this piece of glass directly and it won't fracture like a normal piece of plate glass would. 
And that's kind of one of the key features. And the reason this happens is it has a very low coefficient of expansion. So when you heat it up, it doesn't expand rapidly. It's, it expands slowly and evenly through the part. And the reason I mentioned this is it, this becomes important in different applications in optics. So telescopes uh, and things like that, they'll build parts out of uh, borosilicate because it the because they don't change shape they don't expand as the temperature changes so this is a very important use in optics and various types of research now you mentioned earlier using this to make a glass filter which sounds like a perfect use because this uh these parts like the parts that come out of um the final process of all of our materials have that porosity to them um, so filtration is an excellent use here. What if you wanted to have a solid part though? Right. We're working on this. This is very easy with our glass materials. Um, what I've developed is a process where we infiltrate it. Let me, let me mute it. Okay, so we'll, this is a glass piece that I put, uh, put in a small bowl of sodium silicon. And it will soak up a lot of it just naturally. But this part I put in a vacuum chamber. Let me move through the video here. And you can see the vacuum is, is drawing the air out. At the end of the video, or at the end of the process, I simply remove the vacuum and the sodium silicate will infiltrate back into the part, filling all of those pores. So this is a relatively simple method of creating a solid part with no porosity, it's glass. And this actually will work with our metals too. We're experimenting with that. There's a few different options for infiltrating porous materials. But the one that I'm demonstrating here is pretty common in industry, in industry and various different types of science applications. But sodium silicate is easy to come by. Uh, people just make it at home out of lye and silica packets. And there's uh, there's dozens of videos on YouTube that show you how to do this. So it's a very accessible chemical. So you're showing us how to get a solid glass part. Does that mean I can 3D print and infiltrate my own baking dishes at home or measuring cups like uh, we use Pyrex in our kitchens? Right. Food safety is a topic we haven't exactly taken on yet. So you've mentioned a few uses um, in labs, um, lab glass, lab apparatus, filtration, things like that. But what about in the art sphere? Right. Well, this is a, this is actually a fun one and and easily accessible. Um, you can print. A lot of people work with. They do glass work in their kilns, like. Uh, making beads, making fused glass art objects, things like that. And this is an excellent addition to that. So you can easily 3D print a part that you're going to use in your glass jewelry. In fact, I'm really excited about this and I plan on doing some experiments here in house. But the pieces after they're printed, so the parts that I showed you, you can heat them with a torch and manipulate them just like you would in lamp work in various art industries or where people are making uh, sculpture or uh, uh, paperweights and things like that are really are, are common applications that people experiment with. So we think this is gonna have a lot of applications in arts. So you mentioned this being um, easily printable. It's a rigid material, but it will break if you drop it just like glass. Correct. Borosilicate is stronger than plate glass, but it's still glass, so it will break. And people are, most people are used to handling this material. Almost everyone has some uh, glassware, glass measuring cups in their kitchen, that kind of thing. Anyone that's worked with chemistry, nearly all of the glassware used in chemistry is made from borosilicate. So we've got this new um, 3D printing filament that allows you to 3D print glass. Um, the Pyrex borosilicate filament is loaded at 73% Pyrex by mass. It's available now in 1.75 millimeter diameter only in this introductory um, 
run. It will center at about 843 Celsius, that's 1550 Fahrenheit. And then uh, post center, it can tolerate temperatures up to around 600 degrees Celsius, 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the uh, the post processing process is simpler than with the material or uh, with the, our metal materials. You don't need to worry about that oxygen. You're burying your part in the refractory ballast, putting it in your kiln, and running through this, our standard debind process, and then going right to your sintering temperatures with no care about how much oxygen gets to the part. Is there anything else that you want to say about this new exciting material, Brad? Well, just that. Anyone out there that's currently working with glass and has a kiln and a 3D printer or that works with precious metal clays and they go get a 3D printer, this material will work right out of the box. It'll work using the process that they're accustomed to working with. Um, as a side note, it'll also work in 3D pens. And I'll do a little bit, I'll do a video on this also, which is which is kind of interesting. You can you can very you can manipulate it in very small detail with a 3D pen. Wow, that's awesome. So there are a lot of uses for this material. It can be um, 3D printed with a printer or with a pen. Uh, the sintering process is really straightforward. So with all of that said, I have one more very important question for you, Brad. All right. How do robots eat guacamole? Uh, I don't know. With computer chips. Yes. <laughs> So that wraps up our podcast today. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you next time.